Welcome to another episode of The Rundown. I'm your host, FIFA247. I got the whole crew here. We got a jam-packed rundown, so make sure you stay tuned to the end because everybody wants to hear our thoughts and opinions on the whole Diddy situation. So, first and foremost, I want to start with some untimely deaths that have happened here recently. We most recently lost Rich Homie Kwan. We also lost Frankie Beverly. We lost James Earl Jones. And we also lost Fat Man Scoop. Uh, All four of these people have been iconic in their own right. And it it is it saddens me, especially with that Rich Homie Kwan situation, that it was an apparent overdose of um, some Percocet or something like that. Um, how did y'all feel when y'all heard and saw all of these legends in their own right? You know, no longer here with us. Um, I think with Rich Homie Kwan, I think you know, of course, I immediately thought about the song that that he had the big hit. Um, but I was really just um, really it, it was the reaction from everybody. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was trying to think of the proper word to say, but I thought the response, the reaction from a lot of people across media was very interesting. Um, the number of outlets that were discussing his passing, doing like their biography on him and stuff like that and the thing that went through my head was like ain't no y'all really cared about rich homie kwan that much to for fox news to cover it like you know Mm -hmm. is it because it's a popular rapper and it's a it's a death and you know rap is associated with this and that or whatever so i was like that's this outlet covering rich homie kwan like that's interesting so it felt very amular chases chase mm. that's a word to a certain degree but you know it is a thing so i, I know people do that because you know a lot of rappers that are unknown get covered when they die you know mm. even on this program we're not we're not immune from that we we do it too but we are hip-hop publication but nevertheless it was um unfortunate to see that amount of love being shown his way in his passing instead of mm-hmm. while he was here Mm-hmm. And and that was the thing with Rich Homie Quan, um, Fat Man Scoop, and um, who was the other person? I can't James, remember. James James Earl Jones from Frankie. James Earl Jones, yeah, James Earl <laughs> Jones. That was like, yo, that we know who that is. Like the voice, that's, man. That's just yeah, man. The voice, bro. <laughs> but it, it's you know it's it's a reminder, especially with adding on Frankie Beverly, that we 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 are getting there. It's about time that we're gonna start seeing more and more of these. So. Yeah. Yep. Um, Frankie, man, Frankie, Frankie's man, Frankie's the guy. Mm. Like I um, started reading up on him a little bit, and I remember two years ago I just listened to his old discography. Frankie Beverly Mays, one of my one, my dad's one of my dad's favorite group, Happy Feelings, and Look at California would be playing around the house all the time on vinyl. I think I even got those um, from when he passed. So yeah, so I, I'm I'm gonna do something on Frankie. Definitely do a uh, like a tribute to him, you know, going through his discography a little bit more in depth. So that that'll be on my my channel. It's be on YouTube, Kenneth B. Inch. Um and I'll, I'll put a link in the description. But yeah, yeah, I I, I I got a couple of people that that I'm gonna do. But Frankie's been elevated, man. You know, so because uh, his music, the B sides, yeah, his got, deep cuts. Well, yeah, people always hey. hit the popular hits, but man, he got some. You know, he got B. Some, man, he got some B sides that's like, bruh. Yeah, you can man. Make, you can make like a little greatest hits playlist off of just the B sides alone. Yeah, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hell yeah. yeah, man. Yeah, it's crazy because yeah. he he only a few. He like a few years older than my dad, so it's just like like mm. you said, Ken. It's like, damn, man. Like it's you know. You know, as we're getting older, our OGs and legends, they're, mm-hmm. you know, getting older too. I'm going to yeah. say one thing, though. If Stevie passed away, man, y'all check on me. Y'all make sure I'm all right. Because <laughs> 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 yeah, Stevie and my pops the same age. So it's I'm like, oh, man. So, yeah, it's just yeah, James Earl Jones, 93. You know, that that's a long, I mean, he lived a long life. So, you know. Amazing life. Yeah. He, he so, accomplished and did so many things. Man, yeah. So, you know, it's. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's unfortunate. And the Fat Man Scoop, you know, that was definitely unfortunate. The thing I hated about the Fat Man Scoop situation was like they were reposting or like re re you know reposting his video or like him passing out at the club, like literally his last moments alive at, at a party. 
and he like passed out behind the backstage. I'm, oh, like, y'all, I'm like, why, why, why are y'all posting that? Like, come are on, they posting that? People was like retweeting and posting. I'm just like, oh, mm, block, yeah. block, block. Like, st- come on, stop. That, that that was the most shocking one because the other ones we didn't necessarily see them. Uh, Fat Man, obviously, he was performing um, at a club doing what and he do. doing, doing what he, what he do. does. Yeah. You know, saying what he loves, and you know, basically, he told the people, you know, basically, put your motherfucking hands up and. That was literally it. You know what I'm saying? That that was shocking. That was shocking to see. That's crazy to go out that way though. Like doing like yeah. you know, essentially what you love and mm-hmm. being you know, hyping people up and things like that. So man. Yeah. yeah. Man. But well, um, when you lose your life doing something you love like Paul Walker, you know, he mm-hmm. was in a Porsche, uh ooh, what's the, <clears throat> the name of that? The Carrera G T, I wanna say. And mm-hmm. you know, he had a, his friend driving and you know they crashed or whatever. Um, that car's notorious for that, but obviously he mm-hmm. was doing something he loved to do as well. But yeah, like I saw Rich Homie Quan, I was like, oh snap, man! Like the only thing I could think of is that I had just not just saw him, but like I had recently saw him on a, a 85 South Boys mm-hmm. thing that they had on Netflix, mm-hmm. and he was one of the performers. I was like, dang, like you know what I'm saying? Like his songs were were huge, especially here in Atlanta, and mm-hmm. that that was like shocking to kind of see or whatever. And I'm and um. Uh, I think I think Nate sent it to me, it was, and she said he got like a bad pill or something like that. I never knew mm. any of these deaths like uh, uh, the actual outcome of them because after I see it, I, re- I really don't look much more into it. After it happens, James Earl Jones, I mean, you know, like that's iconic figure. Um, all grew up on him, so but like I said, he was older. You know what I'm saying? I was surprised. Right. He was still alive to be quite honest. I was like, damn. Yeah, 93, uh, bro. That's man. Yeah. I, mean, I know you're talking about Frank Beverly, uh, Ken, but like, it, like that dude performs every year. Like, every year he performs, like, multiple times, not just, like, one show. Like, he, mm-hmm. he performs all the time. So that was that was uh, shocking to hear that he actually passed away. Because every time I see Frankie Beverly's name, he's always performing somewhere at, at some sort of uh, amphitheater. Like, all mm-hmm. the time. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> Well, you know, talking about Fat Man, Rich Homie Quan, and Frankie Beverly, something obviously that they all had in common was the music. So, September music releases. Let me know how interested you guys are in the ones that are coming out this month. On 9-6, I believe, or the 16th, we have LL Cool J, uh, The Force, G Herbo, Big Swerve, Sleazy World Go, More Than a Shooter, and Layla Gap Year. Any of those projects that you guys are looking forward to? I mean, LL was the only one that I was like, okay, Q-Tip producing it, so that 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 piqued my interest. But the rest of those, have you listened to it? <clears throat> have you listened to it yet, B? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I have. Okay, what you think? Because I I listen to it too. Yeah, man. Uh, look, this this uh, this is my first time I've looked forward to an L Cool J album since Mama said knock you out. So that, mm-hmm. that says a lot. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think I think it was a solid project. I mean, I think overall it was solid from front to back. I mean, Q Tip gave him he was diff- giving us some different sounds that, you know, I'm glad he didn't give him typical like, like Q Tip ish tribe type of you know 90s sound mm-hmm. trying to take it back. Like he gave him some new. He was playing he was playing around with some a lot of samples and a lot of different sounds. So I, I think I think that was dope. I mean, the singles already had me interested when I heard all the singles for it. So I'm like, yeah, I think Q Tip about the. And then LL sounded so so re-energized. Like he yeah, sounded, man. he sounded like this was a focus. He yeah, he had a, a point to make on this album. So and I, I think he did it. So yeah, I was I because I had listened to it too, um, and I was like, because I was like, man, this sound this 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 sound this sound good. Like the production, I was like, this sound different. That him and Eminem track, that shit, that Murdergram shit. Yeah, Bruh. oh, he had <laughs> a video to that too. Yeah, that's smart. That's smart. He better put yeah. a video out for that. Yeah, yeah you got that. to. You got it's, to. That's with him. Yeah, yeah that's with exactly. him. Exactly. Like, man, they both was Jesus Christ. Yeah, I was like, damn, LL, LL rapping. I said, look, look. I said, LL rapping. And I, I, I was, I was talking to yeah, the missus. I was like, rapping. I said, this is, this is the benefit or the advantage sometimes that you have when you have a producer actually in there or when you work with somebody. Mm-hmm. And I said, I, I, I felt like I haven't heard this type of L in a minute. And I was like, this this is the Q-tip influence. Like Q-tip mm-hmm. is like, this is what we're, this is this is the idea of the vision. Yep. He 
probably talked to L. They probably came up with it together. He's like, I got you. Mm-hmm. And he gave it to him. And L was like, I got you. Yep. And then, you know, yeah. and then he then he went to work, man. So I was like, yo, this is actually this is actually pretty, pretty, pretty good. I was like, yeah, was, I was, I was. It didn't disappoint was, me. Nah, like I, I nah. had a feeling it was gonna be good. I'm like, I mean, I, not now how good I thought it was gonna be. That's different. But like, I just had a feeling. I'm like, man, I think this album is gonna be, it's gonna be a good listen. I think this is gonna be a good listen. Yeah, no, nah, it was, it was a good listen. I was like, okay. I said, all right, all right. Even the miss was like, okay, I'll, I'll rap it. I was like, okay, yeah, I said, yeah, 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 bro. Yeah, yeah it was man. rapping. On the 13th of September, we have Key Glock, Glockavelli, Babyface Ray, the kid that did. You interested in? Any of those projects? Mm. Maybe Babyface Ray. Mm. Maybe, but that's about it. Glockabelly. Okay. Yeah. See, see what the Glock do, bro. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> and then, um, how busy said Blue and Exile dropping on the twentieth. So is Future, the Pluto mixtape, and then the Alchemist, the Genuine Articulate. Any of those projects you guys are looking forward to? Obviously, be. We know Blue Next out for you. Mm, I mean, yeah, Alchemist. You know, I'm, I'm always here for some new Alchemist okay. productions, some new Alchemist beats. You know what I'm saying? Is it interested with this future? You know what I'm saying? This is going to be his third project that he's dropping this year. You know, he already gave us two joints with Metro Boomin. So now he's doing his, uh, you know, the Pluto. Of course, when you see Pluto and Future involved, it's like, okay, mm-hmm. you know, what are we going to get? So, yeah, I mean, I'm going to listen. I mean, I ain't going to say I'm like, I'm looking forward to it, but I'm going to definitely, I'm going to definitely peep my ear and then I'm, I'm going to listen to that future. Well, you let me know how I go, B. Yeah, I listen. You know, I'm always curious with Future, man. You know, because I, I know I'm at least get like about three or four bangers that I'm like, yep, this is this this the replay value. This shit is high. Now, as far mm-hmm. as the whole album, you know, you know, I probably won't enjoy the whole project, but I know I'm gonna leave. I'm gonna leave with about three or four. Where I'm like, yep, I'm taking these three with me, and I'm gonna hey. be playing these. <laughs> we uh, we all have our artists like that, so yeah. you know, I, I'll I'll. I'll unless you know if we do it um but I'll, I'll get around to it but the other two for sure of course yeah, yeah. can you already know we doing that for i know i already know you, might as well you, you know. might as well holler at nick and nick nick yep. and nick a future fan and a big future fan i i believe and then uh spike too spike is okay yeah. well not 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 a future fan but reaching out to spike getting them on that one yeah i think ashton yeah. is too so we can holler at them see what's up Cool, cool, cool. Well, staying on the music tip, and we talking about mixtapes, are y'all surprised that a 20-year-old mixtape is topping the charts? Travis Scott's Days Before Rodeo is number one on Hot Billboard 200. That that came out 20 years ago? 2014. That's 10 years ago. Or 10 years ago, I'm sorry. I did. I'm like 20. That's just ten years. Ten years. My bad. My yeah. bad. 2014. You know, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think a lot of Travis Hart, die, Tra- Travis Scott diehards, they they go to this album a lot, right? And this like one of their favorites. This is one of those ones. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I feel like this is like a, a, a you know one of their favorite ones. So I, that's not surprising. That's not surprising. Yeah, because streaming wise, it did over three hundred and sixty thousand. But Travis Scott came out and said, "Hey, those numbers aren't one hundred percent correct because he sold anywhere between one hundred and twenty-five to one hundred and thirty thousand in vinyl. So mm-hmm. add that to that three sixty. So he sold damn near half a million. So here's the thing, because I saw people in. I think this came up and on a live or something we were doing. Mm-hmm. And people were saying that Travis manipulates his sales by bundling stuff up together. What, did he do that here? I don't know if he did that here, but you remember I brought that up last time. Nikki was mad with him because he got number one because right. he bundled it with something. But that's, I mean, that's just good marketing. You know what I mean? Like, I, I mm-hmm. don't think there ain't no rules to that. There ain't no rules saying you can't bundle something or. Mm-hmm. or whatever or, or add some sort of incentive for buying an album like no one it's no rules against that you know i mean yeah there's no rules against it so i think it's fine i'm wondering if the bundle wasn't part of it what the numbers would be and that that's that's why i was asking like is this pure just streaming because it would say, it would say a lot i know people you know they, they love travis 
streaming streaming he, he missed out on hitting number one with the 360,000 but that was streaming alone the vinyl ship out is going to do it anywhere between 125 to 130 extra on top of that okay that's not bad that's not nah bad. not at all not, especially in a very down year for hip hop yeah but he, he he's not selling anything new he's selling some old he repackaging and selling some old shit but 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 that but that's the crazy part about this, Ken, is that the new stuff isn't selling. I don't know if there's another artist that could come out with a ten year old project and be number one. The only one that comes to mind is maybe my beautiful dark twisted fantasy, but obviously it was already sold once upon a time. This was never sold because it was a mixtape ten years ago. So now it's on streaming, it's on it's it's re released, you know, for everybody to get, which is it's kind of crazy. That something ten years old is is topping the chart. Like I I, I didn't expect that Not at all. Me. These new artists wet, bro. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I'll tell you an old artist that isn't whack. Little Way. Little Way breaks his silence in regards to the whole Super Bowl thing. Um, I know I sent it in our group chat. I don't know if Sonny's going to input the, the video here so y'all can hear it if y'all have not. That being said, how do y'all feel, man? Uh, how do y'all feel about that response? And, and, and I will go first on this one. I really feel that it was a little, it wasn't authentic. I think that he felt compelled to say something, mainly because everybody else was saying something. And you, when you watch that video, it just, it doesn't feel like it's heartfelt. It, it, it just doesn't now I'm not saying that he doesn't feel what he's saying but I am saying that an, an outside observer isn't going to feel what he's saying you know so that being said how do y'all feel in regards to Little Wayne's response I was gonna say real quick I, I just had that similar take but we don't is the mic still on when I said that I think I can't it remember where probably it was. yeah yeah because we were talking about the Nicki Minaj thing check that out it's out yeah. now Yep, yeah, you know, and I, I was saying things before. It didn't feel authentic. You know what I'm saying? I, I don't feel like he would even release that video if it wasn't for all this stuff going on. Uh, and I don't know. It was just I don't know how to say this without saying like it's just whack to me. The mm -hmm. whole situation is just so whack to me. You just fell in line with the whackness. You know what I mean? Like mm. we're talking about people clearly that respected you or, or respect you. With Jay Z and Kendrick, and, you, and you're and you're playing into this this whole thing, and still in the light and shine away from the moment. This is the first art, first like rapper or, or uh, hip hop artist to be headlining a Super Bowl, and mm -hmm. you and, and y'all putting more focus on the, on this crap, and, and it's like you're feeding into that. Like I would have liked him to say at least, you know, you know, first of all, congratulations to Kendrick Lamar being the, the you know the first hip-hop artist to host the Super Bowl or whatever, whatever. And then maybe say like, yeah, it hurts. You know what I'm saying? I can't front or whatever. That that would have been fine with that. Your feelings mm -hmm. are your feelings, right? You know what I'm saying? If it, if it truly hurts you and you're, and you're upset about it for whatever reason because, you know, you feel like you, you know, you're supposed to have it, fine. Your feelings are your feelings. But man, it's just, it, the whole thing just seems whack to me and I, and I just hate that it's so much focus on that. Versus the fact that Kendrick is about to tear this shit down for the Super Bowl, you know what I mean? And I don't know. And then all the stuff that you know that we know Jay have done has done for Wayne. It's just like, bro, like you're not going to say any, nothing about any of that. You're just mm -hmm. going to what everybody else has been singing and then make your make your public announcement. I didn't like it. I, didn't yeah. like it. I was actually surprised that he even made a video. I didn't think he was going to say anything. I didn't yeah. think he re even really cared that much. So right. when I saw the video and I was I was watching it, and it was some I, I bl for first and foremost I blame myself blah 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 blah, which kind of makes sense because people have been floating around videos of his poor performances and stuff like that. You know I was like okay that's that's interesting, but the whole video was just weird. Like Wayne, why are you? making a video about you not being selected for the Super Bowl. This is odd. Especially as B has pointed out multiple times that the last one was in 2013, right B? Yep. And we didn't even get one. We didn't get a video. We didn't get anything. So it's just like, so maybe you guys are right. The, the backlash, the uproar 
forced him to say something instead of be quiet. But I, I think I think he just should have just left it alone, man, and, and kept quiet, and just moved on. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's unfortunate that he would go to this go to this uh, level of making a sad looking video like he hurt. Like I mentioned this like Ken mentioned, I mentioned on Is the Mike's Alone, like, bro, where was this where was this where was this hurt in twenty thirteen? When you was kind of more if in your peak, even in those years, than you are now. I mean, you know, it's kind of like it seemed like these past couple of years, performer wise. I mean, Lil Wayne hasn't looked the best. You know what I'm saying? He looked like he out of shape, like he can't even hold a whole stage. Not a stage that big of the Super Bowl. Yeah, he can come out as a feature artist, but it's just like, where's the outcry? Where was the outcry back in 2013? Where just. This is crazy. Like I mentioned before, I've just never seen this much backlash over an artist being announced that he's performing at a Super Bowl. Kendrick released that video of him, you know, putting the football. It mm-hmm. every, drove everybody crazy. I've never mm-hmm. seen the world so flustered because of this video, bro. This shit is wild, man. So, and it also makes me think like if it was anyone else, would we get all this backlash? If it was anyone else, you know what I'm saying? So, mm-hmm. it, it's, it's whack, Wayne. It's, it was whack as hell. It's a shame because we know it's going to be like a Millie. People, well, okay. <laughs> he said, "Okay." Okay. Hey, hey, the dad joke did not go through. Um, I'm gonna tell you something else that 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 isn't going through. Um, Diddy. This is this is what everybody wants us to talk about. Uh, Diddy was recently arrested by the feds, uh, charged with trafficking sex trafficking and a whole host of other things that we are going to get into. Uh, Before we get into some of the details um, and some of the other allegations and lawsuits and things of that nature, are y'all surprised in the timeline and the flow of the whole Diddy situation? Nah, it it, it takes a minute for that stuff. We knew it was inevitable uh, for the most part. Once once they rage, once they rage, bro, that means they got something. something, Yeah, (laughs) yeah, they just ain't gonna go kicking the door, waving. All right, fine. Um, Stop. But uh, (laughs) (laughs) he said, uh, "Just stop." <laughs> but uh, but nah, it, it, yeah, it's it, it was just a matter of time. We were just waiting for it to happen, and you know the the thing about this is that what's on the tapes, bro? Like that is the thing. There are a lot of people quivering in their boots right now because they have no idea. <laughs> this man say quivering. <laughs> he right. He right. Yeah, no, you right. I know. They have no idea whether or not they going to be called, bro, or what if they that because it's going to leak. TMZ going to get their hands on it. So there mm-hmm. are a lot of folks that that went to their party. There's a video about with the the baby floating around right now, on the internet, and and they calling it the 15. Have you guys seen that? <laughs> no, man. They calling it the the baby said he it was about 15 people left. They they're calling it the 15. And he's saying that Diddy started liking him and he was allowed to stay and that Jay-Z and Beyonce were there too and they were allowed to stay as well. So he kind of looping them in there as part of the 15. What? This thing about to get crazy, bro. It is about to get crazy. A lot of, um, there's a a couple of YouTubers that I follow. One of them, shout out to Tisa Tells and there's another one, I can't remember the name, you know I'm bad with names. But basically they've been breaking it down and they've been saying Jay, Beyonce, there's a lot of other big big name celebrities that are going to be involved. Off. However, Combs lawyer Mark and Angela, ooh, I cannot say that last name. Uh, we're just going to say Attorney Mark. Um, he says that this is not the same as singer R. Kelly, sex cult leader Keith Rainier, or Q sex trafficker Jeffrey Epstein. This is different, he told the court. These were consenting adults. So obviously they have um, subpoenaed and t- taken all of these videos. They have looked at these videos and obviously there's people on these videos, but the lawyer is arguing that these are all consenting adults. So that's why it's different. So we did it. We just didn't do it like that. Yeah. All the, and that's that's fine. He's probably absolutely right, especially if Diddy got paperwork and stuff like that with their signatures on it. Uh, consent is a is an interesting thing. You know, we've had these conversations before. All it takes is uh, you can you can remove that consent ASAP, right? But all it takes, FIFO, 
It's just one. Yeah. It's just one person to not be consenting. And yeah. that would be enough for whatever they got on him to to stick. But trust and believe they've covered that part of this already in terms of whether or not all people are consenting. That's like elementary, bro. <laughs> like, you know, that's that's if we're talking about it, you know, these these are the FBI, bro. So you know they already got they are they they should be the best of the best. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you guys know this, but um, at a Manhattan hearing, Combs pleaded not guilty. He was denied bail, $50 million bail, and will remain in custody. He also said that um, he's willing to take like a drug test and do a whole bunch of other things, but the judge was not playing that. So he's going to be remain. He's going to remain in custody until trial. Shit, and down goes Diddy. I mean, <laughs> down goes Diddy, bro. Mm, double down the time for that, bro. I know, right? <laughs> Could be yeah, called you, Tom Can you never know? <laughs> did y'all hear the alleged, the alleged audio of him and Meek Mill? Did y'all hear that? I did. Ooh, bro. So that was oh. real or fake? I don't I mean, know. I, that's why I say alleged. Okay. But yeah, that's real, know. bro. Woo! What what what, Jeez, what was saying? I, I can't mm. even say it again. I can't even repeat oh. it. B. Oh, I got you. I, I can't you. even repeat it, bro. I, and, I, and you don't even got to check it out. I was just saying if y'all had her, you know, oh, y'all no, could y'all no. do that. Well, yeah, well, I, I will listen to it, but uh, F, FTA was said allegedly by Meek Mill. Uh, that's an acronym. I'll let you figure that out. <laughs> well, the, 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 bro, that's crazy. <laughs> bro. <laughs> Bro, the, what? the only thing that I need is I can't remember the name of the song, but um, Meek Mill says in the intro of the song, he says, um, some, 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 they could arrest me for the things I did with Diddy or some crap like that. So, what? He, yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it's a well known song. You know, I'm bad with names, so mm. don't ask me for that. But uh, moving forward, a couple of other points that I want to talk about um, before we end the rundown. I don't know if y'all saw this. This, this happened about a week ago. Dawn Richard, uh, she was part of uh, 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 Diddy Dirty Money. He created a group with Dawn Richard. Uh, she was also part of Danity Kane. She yeah, sued. Know what she came out. Yep. Yep. She sued about a week ago uh, for sexual assault. Um, also, Diddy lost a hundred million dollar judgment because he failed to appear at court. So somebody else has sued him. The judge judged against him a hundred million, and also. This is the last point that, you know, I'm going to put out there. We could talk about all of them or we could just leave them as statements. Um, Diddy was is accused um, in terms of trying to blow up Kid Cudi. So oh, that yeah, is a legit that. thing. So that is a legit thing. Um, oh, wait, that's an official charge now? Yes. Hold on. That's the arson charge, right? Yeah, so he is accused of um, armed kidnapping and a plot to allegedly blow up Kid Cudi's car. Um, The bro, that's wild. uh, Yeah, Uh, defendants co-conspirators set fire to individual one's vehicle by slicing open the car's convertible top and dropping a Molotov cocktail inside the interior. Police and fire department reports extensively document the arson and conclude that the fire was intentionally set. Multiple witnesses would also testify to the defendant bragging about his role in destroying individual one's car. Obviously, you know, they're, they're, they don't want to say names because uh, this is an ongoing investigation. Uh, and this happened back December 22nd, 2011. Uh, so, yeah, man, they, they, they look, they done opened up the door and now they trying to take everything that's behind that door. So anything that he was allegedly involved with, truly involved with or whatever, what have you. Um, yeah, they, 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 they going for him. They're going for the gusto. Um, I, I, I don't know if y'all also saw um, when the district attorney was talking about that they confiscated weapons like AR-15s and a whole bunch of other stuff. Mm-hmm. Like, like, like mm-hmm. when I'm seeing all of this extra, it's like, damn, bro. Like they trying to get you for everything, my boy. They trying yeah. to get you for everything. All the you know, bottles. Charge, huh? <laughs> Man, the 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 um who was it? I forgot the name of the person that made the press conference, bro. He he was he was hilarious and he didn't even know it. You know, yeah, man, like, caught- real. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I feel you. I, I saw the whole thing, Ken. 
<laughs> it was like seven minutes long. You talking about that guy, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Here's, like, here's all the video ever we have of the the what do you call it? the freak freak freaking part freak freaking off. part freak, freak off. off. <laughs> I bruh. was like, yo, bro. I don't know how he held it together. <laughs> Man. But yeah, it was compelling. It, like he, it was yeah. compelling. Like it was, it was the way he s- was speaking was very compelling. Like mm. I was like, yo, like have you, <laughs> so you haven't seen it be the the, the uh, press? No, yeah, you watch that, you be it. like, dang, yeah, this man going down for real. Yeah, mm. and all the stuff they got on him, be yeah, yeah, it's it's yeah. a wrap. He, really? He's definitely gonna do some time. He's definitely gonna lose a lot of money. He's definitely gonna lose a lot of equity and whatever he owns. Um, he's gonna. He, they're taking Diddy down. They, they, that's they. They are going to fundamentally destroy everything that he's been able to build up. From more money to more problems to no money to okay. I'm, I had to All try one more. Stop! Stop! I had to three, try one more. Stop. B. <laughs> oh man alright well if y'all ain't got nothing else to add and obviously this is an ongoing investigation so um, the longer we go into it the the more things that are going to be that's what um, Biddy said <laughs> okay we can't we can't talk I did, no see, more, it, it, I I did can. see where you had like over a thousand <laughs> bottles of baby oil mm-hmm <laughs> B <laughs> and pink powder. Uh, it, it, <laughs> right, I said B. <laughs> yeah, that shit's wild, wild, bro. Watch the press what? conference, bro. Okay, Just watch right. the press conference, bro. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is crazy. But um, there's a lot of things that I'm pretty sure that are going to still come out. Like I said, it's an ongoing investigation. So, you know, as new facts uh, come out, uh, we will keep you guys informed. So that's the rundown. Uh, we talked about some untimely deaths. We talked about some music releases for the month of September. We also talked about a 10 year old mixtape top, topping the charts, the hot board, the, the billboard hot 200. Uh, Little Wayne finally breaks his silence and the Diddy news. So you already know what it is, man. It's your boy FIFA 24 seven. Then in hip hop, 13 years covering hip hop culture. We catch you guys on the next rundown. We out. Peace. Peace.